Hi, my name is Ryan with Park Industries Customer Service Support. So, assuming that we have already dialed in our AC, we're now going to go and dial in our offsets. Uh, a couple things here. So, in the advanced setup screen with the password sunrise, we are under machine offsets. As I can see here, we have a total of six options. The spindle diameter is going to stay the same. That is, the shaft on that arbor is standard across all Voyagers. Our next, the first one we're going to do is our C to spindle Y. So, and already have the indicated, we'll need the five axis indicator. As I have here on the table, you can use your blade on the table as a mag base or a mag plate for the indicator. Then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to position. But before we position, as you could, earlier in the video, we did remove the housing. Um, now we have no flange, no blade, because we need to measure the shaft here. And then what we need to do also is take some scotch bright, make sure we clean this up and get the rust off of it for dialing purposes. So, like I said, we're going to go and do the uh, <clears throat> our first offset here, which indicator will be sit, set up in the front, in front of the actual arbor, and we'll bring the arbor towards it. So, in the screen here, for this dial that we're going to do, which is our setting C to spindle Y, it says position C at negative 90 and A at 90. So what we're going to want to make sure is we're going to want to make sure that we're clear of our indicator, that we're not going to hit anything on the table. So now we're going to go to our manual screen. We're going to want to make sure our pendant is inactive. We can turn our mute off of our, on our spindle or we can turn it on and have our photo eye muted. Um, what we're going to want to do is down here in this box here at the user point machine coordinates, we're going to tell A to go to 90, which will cause it to pivot, and then and then we're going to tell C to go negative 90, and then hit go C. So as you can see, the machine is now the machine will look like this. Then using the joysticks really slowly here, I can drive my arbor to the approximate vicinity of that indicator without actually touching it. As that, I'm going to use the uh, pendant for the rest. When I'm down here working with this, I don't want to be touching the table or touching this when I'm moving it because it will actually cause me to get a different reading than what I need. So without leaning on the table, I'm going to go slow and I'm going to bring this back Y. When I get, I'm going to probably want to go down a little bit. And then I'm going to probably want to go over so I'm about eyeball looks to be center on that arbor shaft. If I need to, I can make a little bit of a couple adjustments here to kind of just straighten this out just a little bit. And this needle here does bend. I'm going to want to set it so that I don't hit the actual indicator that uh, the needle is the first thing that makes contact with the arbor shaft. So when I bring this back, I'm going to go slow. I'm going to walk it back. Why? Until I start to see the needle move. Now, in order to find the arbor center, I'm going to go X positive or X minus as I move this. So now, as you can see, I'm going back down to zero. That means that I'm walking, that that arbor is actually I'm on the edge and moving away from the center. But as I go towards the center, you can see how the needle peaks and then falls, peaks and falls. That top peak on the needle, when it goes up before it falls in either direction, that is considered the center of that arbor shaft. And that's where we want to have that needle at. So right about there is going to be my arbor center. Now, 
to zero this, I can do, I can turn this, if I'm very careful, Or I can go one thou and I can move it forward or backwards. So the next step is going to be to come over here and go to the operation screen and manual, and we're going to want to go to user zero. Then if I go back to my manual here, the info. Here's the user zero button. Now I want to drive away in the Y positive. And I want to position my C at plus 90 and at A at 90. So positive 90 on the C, which is going to rotate that head completely around. And then I'm going to get to keep A at 90 degrees. So in order to do that, we'll go back to our operation and our manual screen, but we're going to have to shut off our pendant here. But I want to show you guys something quick first. My experience in the field, this indicator will actually wrap around zero twice. And in order to know where we need to stop, we need to watch how many times does it go around zero as so we move it away slowly. So I'm going to hit slow and I'm going to go Y positive. And as you can see, the needle has stopped. That means that when I bring this back forward after we rotate it, I need to come to the zero the first time and stop not the second time. So now that we're there, safe away from it, I can go back over here and shut my pendant off and I can move my joystick and I can drive Y away. Once I think I'm clear that I'm not gonna hit the uh, indicator or any equipment, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna tell my C to go to positive 90. Then once again, I can use my joysticks. And I can get close without hitting the actual indicator. So that looks like a good starting point. So now I'm going to turn my pendant active back on. I'm going to come back into here. <coughs> And I'm going to actually go back in and bring that arbor back towards us now again. So just by eyeball, I'm going to kind of see where I need to be. Now, if I were to, when I'm doing this, if I were to go ahead and now also accidentally let go of the button and this came forward and hit this, I would have to start this whole process over again. So it is very imperative that when you get to the second step here, just take your time. So there you can see my needle moving. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing, slow or one thou, and I want to find the center of the arbor shaft. So right there is the center. So if I go this way, it's going to drop. If I come back, it starts to drop. So you're looking at right about right there. That's the center of my arbor shaft. Now what I know is I have not gone to the zero yet, and it was the first one. So what I can do is I can go one thou, and I can adjust Y towards and I can get to zero. So then we can go to our we can come back to our manual and as we do this it's going to tell us a y value here to capture. So we need to go look back at our 
values in here and we have 0 0.032. That is our user zero value. We're gonna do our C to spindle X. I recommend going ahead and double checking your work, which we've done and we came back correct. Um, our spindle X is gonna be the next step now. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure our indicator, we're clear of our indicator before we obviously start trying to pivot the machine around. So I'm gonna just shut my pendant off. I'm gonna move in a Y to get the spindle away from the indicator. Or my arbor motor, I should say. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position my C axis at negative 90 and my A at 90. Once I'm there, I'm going to make sure my A and C, obviously this still shows on user view, zero, but if I go to absolute zero, my A's at 90, my C's at negative 90. So, the book now says to position my indicator on the left side of my actual arbor. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring it forward. Then I'm going to turn my spindle on, or I'm going to turn my spindle disable on. I'm going to go to my pendant active. So now I'm just going to take my indicator and rotate it. And I won't have to make any adjustments at all to the indicator. All I have to do is just, I can just quit, just nicely walk it right up to it. And I'm there. So now all I need to do is take my pendant and just move 1000 X until I read on the needle. Once I get a reading, then I'm going to just go to slow. And I'm going to walk it Y minus and Y positive. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to look for my Again, to zero, I can either spin the dial or I can walk it in the X positive or negative direction, one thou. Sometimes if you have a little difficulty getting to that zero point, just drive it away slow X positive and then just bring it back one thou click then X negative and that should get you to that zero point. So now that I have that capture I'm going to come back over here again. I'm going to go to my operation screen. I'm going to hit absolute zero. I'm going to hit user zero. That's going to zero all my coordinates. Now I'll go back over there I'm going to slowly move it away again and X positive. I'm just going to pay attention that it only it only went around once. So the first time I hit zero when I come back, that's going to be where I stop. So per the manual, once I've completed that and I have the user zero, I'm going to go here. I'm going to do C to positive 90 and leaving A at 90. 
On this one, you should pay attention to where the motor is, because when this machine spins around, you want to make sure you don't want to hit anything or hit your indicator. And it also is going to spin in an offset, so if I were to rotate it right now, even though it looks like I'm clear, I'm actually going to hit my indicator. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and drive that away. Right about there is a good spot. And I can go ahead and use my joysticks just the same time. I can go up and Trying to get it in the ballpark area here. Once I'm there, I can turn my pendant back on. <coughs> and I'm going to make adjustments. actually going to be this 15067 but in here it tells us right here to take the x value and type that in so we have 15.067 we'll go to our advanced setup and we're going to type that in right there hit enter and turn the system right back on and now we can proceed to our A to 0, A to 90 for the X value. So for follow along that is the next step in the book. So that's generally in the same spot, the indicator, so we shouldn't really need to move that but we're going to need to put C at 90 and A at 0. So what we can do is we can drive away our drive our machine away from our indicator. Make sure our Z's up. Then what we can do is we can tell our A right here to go to the zero point. Tell our C to go to our negative ninety. in our absolute position that's where they are we can verify here C is at negative 90 A is at 0 so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna go ahead and position our arbor in the vicinity of our indicator There, we're going to come down a little bit without hitting our indicator. Make sure our key's turned on. Let's turn our pendant on. 
just on this one, we do have to come down fairly low because we are gonna have to make sure. So in that last, the last one we did where that was pivoted down, that's a good spot on the arbor shaft there to hit with the indicator. So we wanna really bring this face to where the indicator's currently set up. And we're gonna wanna make sure that we don't have any rust or build up here. So if the face of this uh, arbor needs to be cleaned off, go ahead and do so. So we're gonna just slowly walk this in towards my indicator here. What we want to do is we just want to touch. So I'm just going to go 1000x minus until I go ahead and actually hit zero on my indicator, which is uh, right about there. We can go ahead and just zero this out. So that's my spot that I'm going to pick. So come back over here and we're just going to go ahead and hit user zero. So now. We're on the next part here, which will tell you the safe where to move it. So it says X positive away. We need to go C at 90, A at 90. Now, just for safety reasons, make sure we lift our Z all the way up before we try to pivot A at 90 so we're not running the arbor into the actual table. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and slowly drive X positive. We're going to go ahead and lift Z all the way up. The C doesn't change, but my A axis does, and we're going to tell it to go 90 degrees. save time I can use my joysticks and I can drive that arbor in closer. Right about there, turn my pen back on. And now I want to get on the arbor shaft so I'm going to lower this just a little bit and I'm going to bring slowly bring my accent towards the indicator. Needle starts moving. I'm gonna switch over to slow, and now I'm gonna move it y minus and y positive until I find my peak on the arbor shaft, which is right about there. So then, what I can do is I can adjust it x positive or x negative one thou until I get to my zero point. number to capture. So here it's telling me to get my x value which in here is 9.538. It's going to be negative but we're not going to actually put the negative value into this box and it's the same value as we had before so we're not going to change it. So if it's the same if it was 9.537, we are going to capture it. If it's 9.538, we are going to leave it alone. So in this situation, we can double check our work again, make sure we have the correct reading, and then we can proceed to the next step. Okay, so after we do 
our a to 0, a to 90 in the x direction. We're going to do our a to 0, a to 90 in the z. A um, couple things here. So you're going to see this position up like this, but I know from experience that we're going to want to make sure we have our indicator to the desired height for when we have that pointed down. Currently, as the machine is set up. <clears throat> so coming in here, before I go and actually dial this, I'm going to take my indicator and I'm actually going to adjust it so that I can rest like this. I'm going to want to get it as high as possible. So I want to make sure my Z's all the way up and that I have this here so that when I bring this down, maybe a little bit of a gap, that I can actually touch the face of this and that when I pivot, it's not, I'm not going to crash the arbor, bottom of the arbor, into the table. So now I'll we'll actually come back up here and position our arbor. So we're going to drive our arbor away. And we're already at C is or already at negative 90, so we're just gonna adjust A to zero. So we just do that by going operation, manual, and we're gonna go to A. We can type zero here or we can just hit A to zero here. So now if I go back. Now we can begin where we need to touch that uh, indicator off, which is the bottom side of the arm. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to drive the machine roughly where I want it, and then I'm going to switch over to my pendant. <clears throat> Trying not want, I don't want to really hit the indicator at all with the, with the arbor. So we really want to be careful here. If we need to, we can back it off and drop the indicator down a little bit. And we can actually bend or move that needle in a more upward position, which will then allow us to actually hit that arbor shaft without hitting the indicator. But this time, it looks like we're actually pretty good. So now, probably a little down yet. I gotta come down right there. So now that we're hitting in Z, so now I'm gonna move it in the Y direction. And I'm trying to look for the peak on the arbor shaft here. So. There we're past zero, right there it stopped and went back down, so. Right about there is going to be the center of the shaft for the arbor. So what I want to do now is get to zero, so if I bring that up, because I'm past that zero mark. So I'm roughly right about here, make my adjustment. Right about there. I'm gonna go to my operation screen and hit user zero. I'm gonna slowly bring my C up. And once I'm there, I can come over here, turn my pendant off. I can raise my Z all the way up. Move my X positive to clear. And then I'm going to rotate A to 90.
Now, I'm gonna make sure on the bottom side, there's those two bolt heads. I wanna make sure I'm not hitting those. So now I'm gonna just position my arbor over the dial needle. And I'm gonna find the flat surface on the front. And then I'm gonna slowly come down. And I'm just gonna touch my Z position until I hit the zero point of what I captured before. So once I have that, I'm going to look at my Z, which is 9.527. I'm going to go to my setup. And I'm going to enter that value here. Once again, we hit 9527. And then go ahead and hit system on. Now our last one is the gauge to flange. And for that, we're gonna go ahead and actually reinstall the rear flange. So in order to do that, we're gonna move the machine in a safe location. And we're just gonna tell it to go to C to zero and A to zero. install the key and we'll put our flange on and when we do this we want to make sure because we're not going to have the blade on we're going to want to make sure we push this flange all the way back and get it as tight as possible against the arbor so we just want to make sure that this is snug and not out hanging out here. We'll make sure that's pushed all the way in. <clears throat> Once that's pushed all the way in, we can go ahead. We're always going to want to make sure that the face of this and that we do a good job of cleaning up what we're going to hit on the flange. Um, generally scotch right and wipe that down. So we're going to go proximate center and we're going to lock this back till we get to the zero point on the indicator. Right 
Okay, there we're at zero. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just go back here. We're going to hit user zero. We're just going to come back. We're going to slowly walk X off positive. Then we're going to just go Y negative. Then we're going to slowly bring it back towards the flange, the outside ring. And we want to make sure we hit a, like a not real rusted spot or a spot that's got any kind of a divoting or pitting from the rust. We want a fairly flat surface. And once we're there, all we're going to do is one thou walk X minus until we get to that same point that we dialed in for the uh, <coughs> tip of the harbor. And we have our value of the X, negative 2.70. So if we go back and look at the book, it's telling us to grab that number. So we're going to take our two negative 2.700. We're going to go to setup, but it is a positive number, so we're going to take away the negative. We're going to put the positive value in there. So, all of our offsets have been dialed in. We recommend that you double check everything if there's any doubt, or we always check again after we dialed it once. So when we're done with that, we where the next step is is we do our one inch test cut.